Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we learned why we need data types in C++. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is range of integers. In this lecture, we will understand how to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers. Now you might be wondering why do we need this lecture? In the next lecture, we will understand fundamental data types in C++. There you will understand that different data types have different range. That is, they have different range of values. Now the obvious question is how to calculate the range of values. This is why this lecture is here. In this lecture, we will understand how to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers specifically. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the name of the topic is range of integers. Now let's proceed further and let's understand how to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers. In order to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers, we will consider the integer data type of size 3 bits. So this is my consideration. Consider an integer data type whose size is 3 bits. Obviously, in reality, integer data type is not of 3 bits. I am considering this for the sake of simplification in calculation. We need to derive the formula. So, we need to consider a very simple example to derive the formula. I am considering the data type that is integer data type of size 3 bits. Now, let's consider the different possible combinations of binary numbers that we get from 3 bits. The possible combinations are 000, 001, 010, 011, 100, 101, 110 and 111. These are all the possible combinations of 3 bits. So, this is what we are getting as the result of possible combinations. Now, let's assume that these binary numbers are representing only positive integers. So, 0, 0, 0 is same as 0, 0, 0, 1 is same as 1, 0, 1, 0 is same as 2, then we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the same way. So, we are getting this range of positive integers from these binary numbers. We are getting 0 to 7 as the range. 0 is the least possible value in this range and 7 is the maximum possible value. So now we got the range of positive integers and you might be wondering how I got these values. Let's find this out. For this, we need to consider the positional weights of these bits. The positional weight of this bit is 1. The positional weight of this bit is 2. And the positional weight of this bit is 4. These are the positional weights. Now, we can easily calculate these values. We need to multiply each bit by its positional weight. After getting all the multiplications, we need to add them to obtain the final result. For example, Let's say we want to find what is the equivalent integer value of 110. We need to multiply 1 by 4, we will get 4. Then we need to multiply 2 by 1, we will get 2. Then we need to multiply 1 by 0, we will get 0. Now we need to add all these multiplications. We will get 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is equal to 6. In the same way, 1, 1, 1 will give us 7 because it is 4 plus 2 plus 1. 4 plus 2 plus 1 will give us 7. So, in this way, we get the integer equivalents of these binary numbers. I hope this is clear to you. Now, let's assume that these binary numbers are representing both positive and negative values. If that's the case, then the first bit of these binary numbers must represent the sign bit. Here, 0 represents the positive number and 1 represents the negative number. Also, the positional weight here must be minus 4. This is true for both positive and negative numbers. 
Now let's write the integer equivalence. It is quite simple to write. For these four binary numbers, we will get the same numbers here as integer equivalence. We will get 0, 1, 2, 3. What about this binary number? Now the positional weight is minus 4. We need to multiply minus 4 by 1. So from this binary number, we will get minus 4 as the result. What about this binary number? Here we know we need to multiply minus 4 by 1. We will get minus 4. Then we need to multiply 1 by 1. We will get 1. Now we need to add these two. Minus 4 plus 1 will give us minus 3. So this is the integer equivalent of this binary number 101. In the same way, we will get the rest of the values as well. Minus 2 and minus 1. So now we got the range for both positive and negative integers. The range is from minus 4 to plus 3. Minus 4 is the least possible value here and 3 is the maximum possible value. So now we know that if we consider only positive values, then the range is 0 to 7. This is the range we are getting for a 3-bit data type. We chose this number to make the calculations as simple as possible. Now we need to generalize this. We need to derive the formula from here so that we can calculate the range for any number of bits. Now, what we should do in this case? We know that with 3 bits, we got 2 power 3 possible combinations. We can represent 7 in terms of 2 power 3. We can write it as 2 power 3 minus 1. 2 power 3 will give us 8 and 8 minus 1 is 7. So, we will get 7 from here. Now, it is clear that the range must be 0 to 2 power 3 minus 1. And what happens in case of n bits? If we have n number of bits, then the range must be 0 to 2 power n minus 1. So, this is the formula we are getting, 0 to 2 power n minus 1. I hope this is clear to you. So, we got the formula to calculate the range of positive values. Now, what if we consider both positive and negative values? If we consider both positive and negative values, especially in case of 3 bits, then we know the range is minus 4 to plus 3. Again, we need to represent these values in terms of 2 power 3. We can do this. Minus 4 could be represented as minus 2 power 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is in the power. We will get minus 2 power 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is same as 2. We will get minus 2 power 2. Minus 2 power 2 will give us minus 4. So we will get minus 4. And what about this 3? We know that 2 power 3 minus 1, where 3 minus 1 is in the power, will give us 4. From 4, we can subtract 1. So here we must have 2 power 3 minus 1 minus 1. This is true for 3 bits. Now what about n bits? For n bits, we will get this range. Minus 2 power n minus 1, 2 plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. This is the range we are getting for both positive and negative values. You can verify this on your own why this is matching with this range. You can replace n by 3 and you will get this range. So we got the formula for both positive and negative values as well. So this means we have understood how to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers. And this means we are done with this topic that is range of integers. We learned how to derive the formula to calculate the range of integers. Now we are done with this lecture. In the next lecture, we will understand fundamental data types in C++. So, thank you so much for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.